Horror games are known for their scary, nightmarish atmospheres. But what is it that makes these games so terrifying? As an indie game developer who is making an escape room horror game, I think about spooky atmospheres a lot. And after almost a year of work, loads of blender modeling and plenty of iterations of my levels later, I believe that I have finally created the ultimate horror atmosphere for my game One Socket. In this video, I'll show you how my game atmosphere has evolved from quite basic into something truly terrifying, ranging from visuals to sound and even some storytelling. Along the way, I'll reveal a few unexpected tricks that took the atmosphere to the next level, ones you won't want to miss. All right, let's get right into it. Looking at the old version of the first level in one socket, although it had improved from the first version, it still didn't look quite right. If we compare it to the environment of FNAF 1, we can see a clear difference. What this environment does well is give you a clear idea of the vibe of the room. The spiderwebs, dirt and stains show you a decayed and rundown environment. The wires and other electronics make you curious about their origins and workings. Looking back at our environment, it doesn't really tell us much. Sure, there are pipes and some messy cables on the floor, but that's about it. If you want to further enhance this atmosphere, we have to think about what we want the surroundings to communicate to players. I wanted the first level to give you the feeling that you've just been put in a worn out, torn apart basement, hinting that many people have come before you and that some horrible things have happened here. With this in mind, I added scars and cracks on the walls and floors. I did this by going on royalty-free websites where people post photos of damages and cracks in walls they find. I picked out some cool looking photos, put them into Photoshop, slapped some effects on them and they were ready to be placed into the game. Elements that sit on top of existing materials like this are called decals. Unity's newer rendering pipeline support them, but because I'm using some old crappy built-in renderer, I had to look for other ways to put decals in my game. Luckily there was this old asset store product, which the owner very helpfully made available for free. That enables you to to easily add decals to the scene using the built-in renderer that I'm using. Problem solved. But after these additions, it still felt like the room was missing something. It felt empty and artificial. I wanted to add some basic objects to make the room more visually interesting, give it more of a sense of completeness and to make it feel like it was connected to a larger world and narrative. I added rocks and a broken light strip in the distance to give the environment a sense of decay and breakdown. I also added some more industrial props to make it feel like a disused work environment that is probably connected to a larger facility. And you can see that it worked. The second level also needed visual improvements. My original idea with this environment was to have it be small so that you could feel claustrophobic. Although this might have worked, it hindered the amount of visual detail it could have. To fix this issue, I increased the vertical size of the room, making it similar to a long elevator shaft. You're placed in the middle of it, with both the ground and ceiling being wire mesh. This immediately increased the sense of horror as the seemingly unending space above and below highlights how caged in you are in this tiny space. Having the environment set up like this would also still have you surrounded, while giving me much more space both above and below the play area to put scary elements that would enhance the atmosphere. The floor material also really helped with the sense of horror here, as it doesn't seem stable enough to hold both you and the machinery over this huge drop. After these changes, the environment look a lot better. Also, a general principle is that populating an area with objects make it seem much more like a polished space, as if more thought has been put into the whole environment and therefore the game itself. FNAF wouldn't be the same if you were just sitting in a box. It's a cluttered, lived in and worked in space with connected lore. That is what draws players in. Talking about lore, it is also a central role in creating an atmosphere. I found it so important that I added an entire interactable intro section to my game instead of the usual Star Wars intro style text. But why would I do this? Why not just have an intro text and call it a day? Well, it comes down to having you feel connected with the character you play as and the game world you're surrounded by. Let's say you've just booted up the game and you're suddenly in this horrifying looking killing chamber. I would argue that you would feel less responsible for your situation and less threatened by it compared to if you instead prior to being put in that room, made the choice yourself that you wanted to be in there. When you feel more connected to the in-game character, instead of watching the horror play out from a safe distance, you're now more directly connected to the action. So a threat to the character is also a threat to you. Lore also helps you feel like you're part of the world, like things have happened before you got there, and that things are still happening as you're playing. It makes the sense of horror feel wider, 
that not only the situation is terrifying, but the whole world you're thrown into is surrounded by horror. Sound also plays a vital role in reinforcing the horror atmosphere, making the environment feel more alive and unsettling. To bring the atmosphere in the first level to life, I downloaded this really cool royalty-free recording of a French library. It had people talking and walking around, doors opening and closing, as well as a general ambient hum. I put two audio effects onto the recording. One reverb filter, making it seem like the audio was coming from far away in a big room. This ambient noise really gives the feeling that you're in a small part of a larger active work compound. As for the second vertical shaft level, I wanted to make you feel just like it. Well, not just like a vertical shaft, but as if you were actually in one. Instead of a library recording, I found a recording from the ambient noise of an abandoned warehouse. It had some faint metallic sounds in the background, which made it perfect for this level. But not only is the ambient noise important, sounds that other elements in the level make also have to feel like they're part of the environment. Listen to these two examples. The first example had a reverb filter on it. Doesn't it make such a difference? It sounded a lot more like it was part of the environment, didn't it? That's the power of reverb. If you're interested in this game, please wishlist it on Steam. You'll get notified when the free demo and the full game releases. Thank you. So we've looked at how visual, lore, and audio elements could affect the atmosphere. But that is all pointless if the gameplay itself is a distraction. If players don't understand what they are supposed to be doing, they aren't gonna notice the claw marks on the wall or the subtle ambient sounds. One big problem my game had was that parts of the gameplay were confusing. The source of this problem laid in the first thing you encounter when playing a new level, the tutorial. For the first level, it was not obvious that the tutorial had a problem with it at all. It only became clear to me when I watched some of my friends play the game. They would play through the tutorial without a problem, but later in the game I observed that they had missed specific details that were vital to the gameplay, such as the speaker having a limited charge, or that the clock had to be plugged in constantly to progress. My theory is that the problem lies in the speed at which the tutorial plays. You see, the dialogue is only displayed for a few seconds before disappearing, meaning that new players don't have much time to read through it thoroughly, and as a result, don't remember much of it. I have now added the common press button to continue dialogue feature. This way, the player can just read the tutorial text at their own speed, and they don't have to feel like they have to rush through it. I've also added reminders in the game in case it becomes obvious that players have forgotten any of the key instructions. As for the second level, well, it didn't have a tutorial in the first place, which was quite foolish of me. Of course, players would be confused if they didn't even know what they had to do in the first place. Now that these problems are solved, players are free to concentrate on how scary the game is. All of these things come together to form the key of creating a horror atmosphere. Immersion. To feel scared by something, you have to feel like it's actually a threat to you. And you can't do that if you don't feel like you're part of the world. You have to engage the player's senses and trick their brain into thinking just for a second that this could be real or that you're really in danger. This won't happen if you're sitting in an empty box. After each iteration I made, I felt like I was getting closer to a truly immersive horror experience. If you're looking forward to the full release, don't forget to wishlist the game on Steam. And if you want to hang out in the community discord, you're also free to join. Thank you for watching.